In part one, we met Sister Bertrill's Uncle Reggie, a hustler and con man who talks big, but most of the time he doesn't even have a pit to pass in, as my dad used to say. Carlos hired him as his pit boss based on some phony credentials and references, and he seems to be doing fine. But a pair of thieves have come up with an elaborate plan to work both Reggie and the nuns and steal a night's cash intake. When they're done, they've made off with just under $50,000, a little over 400000 in today's value. Needless to say, suspicion falls right onto Uncle Reggie and he goes into hiding. Meanwhile, one of the thieves is at the convent masquerading as a nun from Uganda. To get to the bottom of this, Captain Fomento is interrogating the nuns who were at the casino. At exactly 2.35, we got into the station wagon. At exactly 3.03, we arrived at the convent. At exactly 3.04, we were all fast asleep. Then... Just one moment, please. <clears throat> now, we have 2.35, 3.03, and 3.04. Is that correct? Fine. Five and three is eight. Four is 12. What are you doing? Uh, I'm seeing if everything adds up. <laughs> what? Do it. 842. And that tells you what... Never mind, I have a feeling the answer would be painful. Carlos wants to believe the best for Sister Bertrill's sake. Sister Bertrill, this morning I checked your uncle's references in Las Vegas. He never managed the casino. He was a doorman. A doorman? Oh, poor Uncle Reggie. Poor Uncle Reggie! Poor Uncle Reggie's not poor anymore. <laughs> poor Uncle Reggie isn't that unusual. We all want to be something special, something significant that justifies our reason for being here, at least in our own minds. Some people make it. Some feel they have to make things up like Reggie does. Nobody's immune to it. I'm no exception. When I poke around YouTube and I see somebody who has a channel categorizing Lint and they have umpty million subscribers, yes, I get some twinges of jealousy. But you know what? All I have to do to get over that is go read your comments. All the big boys and girls make a mantra out of saying, don't read the comments. I realize that when you get that big, you paint a huge target on yourself for haters, naysayers, and trolls. I love the comments. It's especially gratifying for me when you have conversations among yourselves without me. That tells me that I'm building something here that's special in itself. I say, and I mean it, I have the best audience in the world. You bring me information about shows and people that I hadn't known before. Many of you have shared your DVDs with me so I could review a certain show. You give me unbelievable encouragement, which is one of the things that keeps me doing this. And sometimes I even get to help someone who's having a rough time. Those are my favorite moments, but I like it all. We get a troll every now and then who complains that I talk too much like I'm doing right now, and as often as not, one of you folks shuts them down. We have something very cool here, and it's thanks to all of you. I hope we can always keep it this way, regardless of how big or small the channel becomes. And I think we found the answer to this whole thing. Uncle Reggie needs a YouTube channel. May I speak to Sister Petrilli, please? Por favor. Uh... Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Sister Petrill. Thank you, Mother. Hello? Hello, Sister. Do you know to who you are talking? Someone with a very bad Spanish accent? No, I'm afraid not. I am a distant relative of yours. How distant? Three miles south on the San Rafael Road. At the Rodriguez farm. I'll be in the barn. Okay, then. Since he's an experienced doorman, he should have no problem opening the barn door for her. Was one of our parishioners, Reverend Mother. He's in need of some comforting. And I know it's late, but I think I should go and see what I can do. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, do we have enough gas in the station wagon? Well, if it's all right with you, I, I'd rather fly. It might cheer me up a bit. Yes, you go right ahead. And uh, Sister Petrill? Give our best to Uncle Reggie. Sister Bertrill should quit trying to lie. She's terrible at it. Well, that's what I call a disguise. 
We need to know where he got that cow costume. It's the most realistic one I ever saw. Elsie, if you'd just let me put you in the circus, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. May I remind you that you're the only one of us who's in trouble? He knew this would happen. He expected to get the blame, and he's sure even <clears throat> Elsie thinks he's guilty. I didn't take that money. Why'd you cut out? Elsie, I've been indicted six times. Yes, but every single time the charges were dropped, isn't that right? Exactly, that's right, but... I can't risk another miscarriage of justice. The law of averages are against me. Hands up! I got you covered. Fomento did detective work? What is the world coming to? I knew he looked suspicious when I saw him sneaking into the barn. Oh, that's a relief. He didn't do any detective work. The farmer did it for him and spoon-fed it to him. That sounds more like Captain Fomento. You will get your share of the rewards, Senor Rodriguez, I promise you. Reginald Overton Perkins, you are under... Uh, wait a minute, Captain. I'm going to give myself up of my own free will. Arrest. He beat you to it. That's pretty sneaky of him, you know? I wonder what the official arrest report will say. As if it matters, because there's a good chance nobody will ever read it. Why don't you go out and look for the real crooks instead of torturing poor Uncle Reggie? I assure you, Sister Patrol, and you too, Senora, that whoever took the money will not be able to leave the island. Because I have the airport, the harbor, the freeways, the byways, the police station, but everything, everything is being watched. So in other words, the crooks don't dare make a move until they think it's safe. She says then we can flush them out by making them believe it's safe. She has the captain arrest Uncle Reggie and make a big deal of it in the newspaper. Sister Mary Grace, please. Thank you. Hello? Hi. Did you read the afternoon paper? Joy to the world. He says, I think it's safe to get out of town. He tells her of a flight to Rio and says, meet me at the airport. We've seen how good these two are at planning a caper. Now let's see how they do at a getaway. <laughs> if you put that in some less identifiable bags, you may be able to claim the money came from somewhere else if you get caught. You can't do that with those. Mistake number one. You can be sure and watch for those BUs, sister. Uh, we won't look for the BUs till we find the C-R-O-O-K. <laughs> but they did find him. Oh, and I'm sorry he turned out to be your uncle, Sister Petrillo. Oh, oh, no, my uncle didn't do it. Of course not. You just keep believing that, dear. No, it's true. That newspaper story was just a ploy. <laughs> And that would be mistake number one for the good guys. This reminds me of the average high school football game. The winner is whoever makes fewer mistakes. Sister Bertrill will drive Mary Grace, I have difficulty referring to her as sister because I do respect real nuns, to the airport where Bruce is waiting. Well, uh, we seem to be a little early. Uh, maybe I'll get myself something to read. Oh, I'll get it for you. What would you like? Oh, uh, anything, anything. <laughs> of a religious nature, that is. <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't realize that nuns are allowed to read other stuff, but that will get rid of Sister Bertrill long enough to talk to Bruce. Bruce, we can't go. Relax, baby. Don't lose your nerve now. Come on. No, Bruce, you really need to listen. He won't. C-R-A. Bad guy mistakes numbers two and three, not listening to new and vital information, and PDAs, public displays of affection. They might have gotten away with it if he had restricted his displays to premarital heterosexual interdigitation. Well, the closest thing I could get to anything religious is the uh, Christmas issue of Popular Mechanics. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh. oh. Oh, are your malaria acting up again? Yes, I'm afraid so. And everybody knows it's not safe to fly when you're having a malaria attack. I'm, I think I should go back to the convent for a few more days. Do, do you think they'd mind? Mind us? Oh, they'll go back to the convent where Sister Bertrill will report what she's learned. Nuns give up everything they ever might have thought they wanted to devote their lives to service of God and others. Impersonating one, especially for a reason like this, isn't just tacky, it's evil. 
I have my own issues with the Roman Catholic Church, but I do admire these people's dedication. The overwhelming majority are just like the Sisters of Santanco. They're for real. No hidden agendas, no corruption. They mean it when they say they're here to serve. Seeing someone do what our imposter is doing isn't just a slap in the face. It's a punch in the gut. And they're not about to let it slide. That was a delicious lunch, Sister Sisto. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, talking about lunch, uh, did you ever run into any cannibals, Sister Mary Grace? Oh, uh, heavens no. All of our natives were uh, vegetarians. To my knowledge, there are no cannibals in Africa and never have been. But the people do raise animals for food. They say beef tastes way better than phony nun. By the way, what language do they speak in Uganda? Oh, uh, why the native language, of course. <laughs> Swahili, right? Swahili is one of the languages they speak, but the primary language in Uganda is English. Had she known that, she'd have a good answer for why she never learned Swahili. As it is, she's trying to figure out how she can play the vegetarian card again. Do you miss Africa very much? Oh, I wish I were there right now. <laughs> We have a very nice surprise for you, Sister Mary Grace. Uh, something to um, cure a case of homesickness. Sister Bertrill? You see, yesterday afternoon I went to the library and I got a book on Swahili folk songs. A good song is bound to make her feel more at home. Take it away, Sister Bertrill. <laughs> Before you ask, I have no idea. I don't know a single word of Swahili, and I suspect Sister Bertrill doesn't either. For all I know, that was a carryover from her cheerleading days or something. Do you recognize it? Yes, it's a, uh, it's a, a very famous folk song, popular in that region. What does it mean? Oh, it means, uh, you see, there's, it's, it's about, uh... All she had to say was, no, I haven't heard that one, and she's off the hook. But she's so nervous, her brain is locked up like a bad Windows install. Sister Bertrill makes up a cockamamie story about a love triangle, and Mary Grace is going with it. She shouldn't do that. Why don't you join me in an encore? <laughs> oh. Oh, please, please. Well, I'd love to, but uh, I'm afraid that I'm getting another one of my headaches. <laughs> All she had to do there was say, I don't sing. Her brain really is having a blue screen of death. I think it is time to call the authorities. The San Juan Weather Bureau? Have you got the right number, sister, and the predictions for fair and sunny? Yeah, well, not around here. I think I've blown it. He who is with sin is about to be stoned. He says, I've arranged for a boat to get us out of here. I'll pick you up in front of the convent at seven. We do not have a moment to lose. Where is this so-called sister? You point her out to me Captain. and I will... Yes? Don't you think you're being a little bit premature? <laughs> I see what you mean. I should alert the TV and the newspapers so that they can witness the arrest, huh? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Very good thinking, Sister Bertrill. She doesn't have the money, Captain. You want to wait until the two of them are together with the money and then arrest them. If he arrests her now, he has a fake nun who's hot enough that she can probably entice him to let her go. All that gets him is a cold shower. Fortunately, as usual, I have the answer. We will keep our eye on this so-called sister so that she will undoubtedly lead us to her partner in crime. Thank you. It's just amazing how he comes up with these things. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I left my prayer book. Excuse me. There's your subject, Captain. Start detecting. Or rather, Sister Bertrill will. They think they're away clean. 
They don't realize Captain Fomento has engaged the services of an air unit. She stays with them all the way to their safe house. I still say you could have bluffed it through. How? They didn't teach Swahili at Allentown High. As I said, if she had done a little research about the country she was going to mention, it wouldn't have been a problem. But she didn't, so it was. Sister Bertrill will sneak around and try to hear their plans. And where'd you get the boat, anyway? <laughs> You'll never guess. Well, I'm not going to try. Where? <laughs> I bought it from Carlos Ramirez. Well, you're crazy. Well, I thought it was kind of cute. <laughs> Well, she heard their plans. Now all she has to do is get away from here alive so she can tell somebody. <laughs> That'll give her time to fly away, but while she's doing that, they'll get away. She has a better idea. Now they get to walk the mile or so to the boat dock. And if Sister Bertrill plays this right, she can probably get Captain Fomento to seize that car and then let her trade the station wagon for it. Back at the convent, Fomento, Carlos, Reggie, and who knows who else all pile into Fomento's car and head for the docks. Sister Bertrill has her own way of getting there. Hey, did you just drop these? Rosary beads, are you kidding? I believe they're mine. But you're welcome to use them if you like to pray for your salvation, which I highly recommend. Wait a minute. Just how did you get here? It doesn't matter anyway. Sister, look, I may be as pious as the next man, but... It's bad luck to kill a nun. It's bad luck to kill anybody, especially in cold blood like he's about to do. I'm opposed to the death penalty, but in 1964, they didn't dink around with it. If you were sentenced to death, you went to the chamber or the chair or whatever. That's about as bad luck as it gets. If he's as smart as he's supposed to be, he doesn't want to tempt it. Sister, I promise you a good Christian burial at sea. No, Ruth, no. <laughs> you jerk. I tripped and it went off. Where is she? She go over? Maybe. What for? Suddenly she's gone. It's a little puzzling to me, but they won't bother to look below and see if she snuck down there. Looks like both their brains have gone into a blue screen lockup. Where is she? Well, she must have fallen overboard. Well, I didn't hear a splash. Well, she didn't fly away. You're sure about that? <laughs> Rose? What? Look. <laughs> uh -oh. You killed her. Well, I didn't mean to. Can you pray? The only thing I know is now I lay me down to sleep. Let's have it. <laughs> lay me down to sleep. I remember reciting that one as a child, so I doubt it's an official Catholic prayer. You could try this one. Baruch ta Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. That's a Hebrew table blessing. You never know, it could work. But you'd better hurry, Fomento and the others are here. Uh, boy, am I glad to see you. How did you get here before us? Sister Bertrand, I got the money. Well, I, I took a shortcut. It's a miracle. She's alive, look. She's all right. She's all right. She's the best. Bruce and Faye will have a good 10 to 20 years to try and figure it out. At least it's something to keep them busy and pass the time. Speaking of time, it's time for Uncle Reggie to be going. Carlos is giving him a very good reference, and he's off to a legitimate job. But before he goes, he'd like to see her fly one more time. Was I lying? $1,500 a week, top billing, center ring. Did you hear that, Elsie? I heard, and the answer is no. Uncle Reggie is on his way to a better, more legitimate life. 
but it's going to take a while to get his previous life out of his system. Well, I tried. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Barnum. My best to Mr. Bailey. P.T. Barnum died in 1891. James Anthony Bailey died in 1906. Forget Sister Bertrill, Uncle Reggie realized he had to raise the dead act right here. Things went well until Jesus sued for copyright infringement. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button to let me and YouTube know you want to see more. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the mask here and get signed up so you don't miss a thing because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Some people make it, some feel fit. Blah, 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 blah. Now all she has to do is get away from here. Slow down. Now they get to walk the milers. Okay. I'm opposed to the death penalty. Blah, 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 blah. I can say that. I remember. Blah, 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 blah.